the channel, y'all. We're gonna hit the water today, fish a deep summer. I'm doing something different, just like a three hour session, and I'm just trying to catch everything, but I'm gonna focus on a few key ways that I like to catch them when it's really hot in the summertime. And I'm filming today's video a little different. Please let me know in the comments if you like it, if you want me to do more of that style. It's something I used to do a long time ago. I think it helps explain things really well. When you're done checking out today's dangle, do me a favor, go over to googlesquad.com, do a little shopping. Maybe get some new apparel. We've got brand new styles, designs you've never seen in uh, fishing wear. I mean, it's just completely different designs. A lot of really cool stuff. It's uh, I, it's so hot right now. I wear these things just about every day. Yeah, those are the new polos, you know, if I'm going out or something. And the hats. I don't even wear a Richardson style hat anymore, which, you know, it's, it's cool if you wanna wear those. But this right here, it's a little floppy, super comfortable, non-constricting, and it's stylish. So you use that code LFG, you save 10% off. All right, let's get out on the water and let's give it a day. All right, we're gonna switch it up a little bit today, filming wise. So today we're on the hunt for some schoolers, some schooling fish, hopefully some white bass. Uh, pop it at the surface, that would, that's always fun. Maybe a large mouth or two in the mix. Looking for birds right now birds diving on Chad and just any surface pops keeping the ears open okay we have got just a wad of these puppies wads waiting to come to the surface they just need a reason it's a little white bass they've pushed the shad up there's one that just popped they push pushed the shad up on this little uh, this little shelf here like out over 40 foot of water, then it comes up to about 15. And they're just running these things all over the place. Just want you to bite my toppy. Just want a little toppy pop. This is a good opportunity for like a big spook as well, something that will get these fish, like get larger bass too, to, uh, to bring them all the way up to the top. So I never discount that. <clears throat> I mean, when, I, when I'm out on the lake, I'm, I'm thinking how can, I get, how can I catch everything? Everything that's happening. Uh, you know, the big, the big main predator species, white bass, striper, crappie, and largemouth. The bass jawed, the big jawed things. There's one. Large white bass. big old spoon. Now the main difference between largemouth and white bass doing this is the bass will typically be on some sort of structure. They'll be over a, a point on top of a hump. Yeah, or maybe it's something just subtle. But a white bass will just chase a shad all over the lake. They really have no relation to the cover at all. They're just pelagic. Later in the summer, largemouth will do that sometimes where they get less related to the, the structure and start to chase those shad. And spotted bass are really prone to doing that. They do that a lot. But typically a largemouth is going to like some sort of contour. If you just, if you notice where schooling is happening and you look at the map, you'll most likely see uh, there's some a ledge right there or there's you know, a long extended point, something to that effect that's holding that large mouth there. I'm gonna make a move. I don't like their popping frequency. I need mass poppings. Alrighty, it is 8.45 in the morning. We don't have that low light top water action. Unfortunately, we're, we're probably going to get a, a little bit of a 
I don't know, random schoolings, you know, that pop up. It's just that time of year. They push that up uh, at random times during the day. I really appreciate that, uh, except for spring. I usually have some sort of spoon tied on because I'm always trying to catch uh, whatever's biting. You know, I'm always trying to go after the striper, the white bass, the largemouth, the crappie, whatever. Uh, and a spoon just represents a shad and it's one of the easiest lures to fish. And this time of year, through the fall, it just really excels. And the reason why, in my opinion, is because it's so effective at getting to the fish. Um, right now I've got a flutter spoon tied on. A flutter spoon is different than a jigging spoon. The way that it's shaped, it's got like a cupped, you know, typical of like a spoon you would eat with at the end and it makes it fall. So, oh, wow, full blown carp, carp mode right there. These flutter spoons, they fall very erratically and you'll miss a ton of fish on these. You'll feel a fish trying to eat it and chase it. Um, it's just so erratic that they usually have trouble. Well, man, them trying to eat it is such a fun bite, but it just gets down into that zone of, you know, 20, 25 foot where throwing a crankbait is, uh, it's very difficult to get everything perfect and get it in that zone and get that right trajectory where it's gonna get down in that depth and meet. So a spoon, it just goes right down there. A jigging spoon more so than a flutter spoon, but a flutter spoon will get down there. Easier than a crankbait in my opinion, and when you have semi-stained, uh, all the way up to clear water, a spoon just really excels. When I'm throwing at a bank, like I'm looking at a, some sort of contour or structure, like a long point, something of that nature, or, or a ledge, I'll get out the spoon and I'll throw it and I'll work it down and I'll just wait for it to hit the bottom. And a spoon is really, you know, you're ripping it up like three or four feet, but instead of doing this with the rod, I just use my reel and I reel pretty fast, four or five cranks, to get that bait to come, you know, three to five foot off the bottom. And you really wanna pay attention when it's hitting, because if it, it hits and settles, you're gonna get snagged so as soon as your line goes slack, you want to just reel. And I'll just keep my rod at a, you know, 45 out here and wait for that doink to happen. I was stuck on the bottom for a second. But you will be surprised at what you catch on spoons. You'll catch everything. Catch everything from catfish, crappie, white bass, largemouth. Catch them all. Oh, God dang it. Ah. All right, well, might as well show you guys how to get these things unstuck. Oh my gosh, I'm watching a gizzard shad get blown up right now. Holy cow. Largemouth, it looks like largemouth just pushed some shad up on top of this little shelf over here. So you definitely don't want to set the hook into these things like I did, thinking it was a fish. You just want to get over top of it and shake it. And it acts as its own lure knocker because it's so heavy. I'm not sure what I have here. If I've got a rock or a stick or a rope. Don't know, but I got it back. Man, really need some sort of walking bait to add to uh, this equation right now. Just got to do it. I'm going to get out of walking bait it's not not ours because i need it to make a ton of noise and be very loud right now through the fall is when i like to have some sort of aggressive walking bait tied on and i really like i really like popper style bait more in the spring but like our, our hound is a good bait. Um, I like it in real calm conditions. But when it's a little choppy like this, I like to have something that is really easy to get to smash back and forth and overcome those little, little bits of chop. And it just, it's, this is overly aggressive for shallow, calm water. 
but it's perfect for these big open water conditions, especially we get where stained, your stained water. Like I just saw a large shad get harassed up here. It's going down somewhere. It's going down. Come on, random big boy. Where are you at? Get that random big boy. Got him. Come on, baby. Mm. Oh, that was beautiful. That's one of those bass that was just chasing those gizzards. Oh yeah, it's a good fish. Oh, big one. Big one. I, I can almost guarantee you this was the same fish. Oh my God. He's got it too. It was a lazy bite, but he wanted it. Uh, oh, no, come here. Oh, belly land. Got him. <laughs> Woo. That is awesome right there, guys. That was fun. I can almost guarantee you that was, that was the fish that was harassing those shad. So cool. Stunted, you know, it's probably about a four pounder. He's got a weird, weird stunt to him. Awesome fish, guys. Topwater bite at 9 a.m. exactly. A little late, a little lazy bite, but fun. See ya. <laughs> that was weird how we fought. That was literally like hunting. And that, that's, one, that's one of those reasons you want to have uh, that bigger topwater tied on. It's just, you see something like that, you see a shad just joop, joop, like getting chased. And I could tell it most likely was not a white bass because it was a big shad that was being chased. Flung it out there and just worked it for about two or three minutes, you know, in that same area. And eventually that fish just, just rolled on it. And it had a weird tail. It didn't fight that hard, but I could tell it was a big fish, had, had better weight. So typically I'll throw my top waters on this twitch rod with uh, you know anywhere from like 12 to 15 pound mono. That's usually what I like. But uh, for a little bit bigger topwaters and in the summertime when I'm trying to just fling it out there, cover a ton of water, I like using the, the reaction rod. It just loads up perfectly, flings it out there really good. And it's still, it's 7.2, it's so it's not extremely long. I just have to work it a little bit more to the side rather than straight down. So that is one of the baits I like to have in the, in the summertime arsenal. So now we'll, we'll go back to the spoons. We'll try to fish this ledge and see if we can get anything going there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, buddy. Oh, these look like little ones. Maybe. Come on now. Oh my. Oh, I see a school of them. Look, look, at they're about to jump in my boat. It's crazy. We can get some of these guys. There's a spot I want to fish over here for largemouth, but I'm sorry. I cannot deny this. And I hope you don't either. Don't be that guy that turns their back to, to just waylaying on some white bass, man. Oh yeah, good keeper. That's a good one right there. That's fun. It's perfect fun size. I don't know why it is. Every time I come out here by myself, I get into them. When I bring my daughter out, it's like they disappear. I literally have her her pole right here waiting for her. This morning she's got to she's got to go to a play date, so she can't come with me. Unfortunately. So these spoons are also very effective at doing this right here. Just long casting them. Mmm. Get you some, baby. Mini recon right here would be uh, pretty deadly. 
You just can't get the distance like you can with a spoon. And over the course of 10 minutes, or not even, like a couple minutes, these fish have moved a long ways. Oh yeah, we're getting into, these are all about, about keepers, this one's sub. All right, that school of fish is like 100 yards ahead of me now. And I don't want to pass over my bass spot. I want to fish. Ooh. Typically how I like to do it, keeping fish is, unless it's crappie, I'll just, you know, do me a little haul. Oh, he's actually just a hair under. Just do me a little haul, you know, get me a couple. A couple at a time. Eat them fresh, never frozen. And just keep the process going all summer long. Ooh, some big waves. Watch the camera. Oh my. All right, I'm trying to give you guys another example of fishing these spoons. So we've got some fish that are like directly on a ledge. They're sitting on it. <clears throat> so I'm going to throw the vertical jigging spoon down here. So I'm right on top of the fish. Just giving it that vertical dangle. Ah. Oh. They want to eat it. I think it's just a little too intimidating for them. Too big. I gotta, gotta throw a crappie jig down there. It's just not, it's not even a question. Not even a question. Give them that little natural juicy. Jig is falling into the juice. He's coming, they're coming to get it already. Got him. They just just can't handle it. That's why you couldn't get that spoon. Because you're too small there, bud. Golly. Coming out of the woodwork for it. Little buddy. There appears to be a wad of Kropskis open waters that are just kind of hanging around. That I think are Want me to catch a couple of them just to end this session. Oh yeah, that one smacked it. Drums. Add it to the list, baby. I am the open water suspended drum master. Freaking drum. And that is gonna wrap up our little three hour session today. Uh, if you guys have never fished spoons, they really are a pretty powerful technique on a variety of different uh, lakes and I mean, even rivers and stuff like that. Uh, there's so many different kinds as well. It's a, it's a good thing to add in your arsenal even though this lure's been around for over 100 years. And never forget about that top top in the summer. Uh, that is pretty much a player all summer and when we get to fall when that water starts cooling down again That's when it gets really fun. If you haven't commented already go ahead and drop one and if you already did Drop another let, let me know with some questions fire away fire away on those questions guys. Thanks for being here uh, Good luck in all your outdoor adventures. Godspeed. And I'll see you on the next one